Ah, hello everybody. Hope you are all keeping well. Must mark the occasion, of course, it's uh, the pandemic of the coronavirus March, nearly getting towards April actually, of 2020. So in years to come we'll look back and think, oh yeah, remember that, bad. Anyway, so we're all confined to home. I say all, everybody in the world seems to be confined in some respects to stop the spread of this virus. So anyway, huh, fortunately we're fit and well at the moment. And uh, on Facebook, uh, a very good artist locally, I say locally, he lives about 25 miles away, Ken Hurd, a beautiful artist. Um, I met him at a craft fair, we bought one of his prints. And uh, he put a challenge and he put this picture here of a photograph of a cottage and said, paint it in your own style. So I did. Uh, the way I've done it um, is to do uh, a pen and ink drawing basically. Uh, and the pen went on afterwards. Sometimes I do it first, but this time it was afterwards. And I started with just using a fountain pen ink, black fountain pen ink. And when you put water with it, it tends to m separate the colors out that are in the ink. So there are browns and blues and blacks and all sorts of stuff. So it's, you never quite know what's going to happen. And it stains the paper quite strongly. So you've got to be very quick and work with it quite quickly. Anyway, this is what I did. This is how it went. See if you like it. Let me just go through the process that I'm thinking about this. One, this is uh, landscape. I'm going to do the final piece portrait this way up. And the first thing I do is to get the perspective right. Now, this is one of the vanishing points here. So the other one is over here off the paper, but this one's a very good one to spot. And then I'm going to get all these lines and make sure that these parts go to that vanishing point and mark them down, the chimney in particular from there. Now, they're all straight lines, I know, but... I'll change that later. The one off to the left is sort of disappearing over here. So you really got to make sure they're right. At least they've got to go up from there and sort of down from there because that's where the vanishing point, the horizon is. And then I've also marked the lines of these angles of, of the, the roof to make sure they go right. And I'm going to put... Um, a very sharp shadow coming across because the other thing to concentrate on is the light. Now the light is coming from this side, this is dark, this is light. I'm going to stick with that, but I'm going to make it a far more distinctive shadow as if this hill is creating some shadow going across because then you can really pull the contours out of what is here. And maybe if I cut it across the steps that would look even more effective. But all this texture at the bottom, I'm going to use one of Ken's tricks and just let it all bleed away which is why I've got it upright. Now, another technique, John Harrison, drawn in Yorkshire, uh, is the guy, and uh, he does some fantastic um, drawings. And one of his tricks is to have a very strong perspective going in to the picture. So I've taken this wall and pretended that it's gone round here and brought it right in towards me. But it's, the bottom of this is all gonna disappear really into a something of an abstract form. The other thing is I've changed this chimney. That one looks re very, very plain and ordinary. So I've just changed it about a little bit and made the roof line a little bit more jagged than it really was. So I'm going to use just this. It's ink from a fountain pen and, and water. And uh, so the next thing to do is tip the paper up and get started. When you're working with watercolour, you've really got to think ahead because the watercolour just, or the water and inks just go where they will. So this is just plain water so far. In place are some tissue paper and let's just, that's all nice and wet. Right, that's going to be like, that's going to be like, so it's just a matter of dabbing this in. And once you've got it in, it really does stain, so. 
just got to let it do what it does. But I do want to get a good line there. In fact, I'm going to get an even smaller brush to do that with. These windows are white frames, which is always a bit of a nuisance, so I'm going to use some masking fluid and just very carefully straight away you can see some lovely effects here where the yellow has come out of the, the ink and the blue and these colours. I mean it's just done it all on its own. And here it's almost like a um, pastel type feel to it where it's gone blue and yellow and really quite uh, quite interesting right uh, I've got to go now to, down to the next layer of color so I'm gonna lay it on a little bit thicker wow that is bad but once you do it you've got to be careful because you can't always go back over it so I'm gonna definitely put this down here because that will be quite dark. Very, very darkest pieces are going to be so I'm going to put something quite dark in here right. now <clears throat> let's have a look at these areas here really Where's my <clears throat> bought especially for the job some of that on there then the whole lot will really start to move around let's just try the bottom of this Right, now some attention to this part, which was looking back over here. Mm, okay, this is sort of darker in there. To be honest, I think I can now get rid of the board and work flat. Generally very straight. Look at this, you can see where the, uh, I mean, a bit of tissue kitchen rolls changing colour, the way the colours all move out from the paint, all those are in. Right, now then, I'm going to put a 
shadow under there and the other shadows. Um, I will leave that, but I did want to generate something of a line coming round here. So I'll just stick with that if I may. Sort of wall type thing coming round. Leave that. Right, now for one of the exciting parts, which is to take this off. Oh, I love that. And the black pen on here will really help this out. I don't like using this too much, the masking fluid, but uh, that's worked quite nicely. And now, of course, we can put something of a shadow under there. But it's got to go on those white parts as well. suppose there would be an extra bit under there. Down the side of that. Under there. <clears throat> I'm quite pleased with this as it is. The dangerous bit now is going to put this shadow across. As I said, I want to put a shadow um, so sort of coming across here and then onto the roof and down and across. You can pick out the contours of these things. Yeah, okay, I don't want to do any more than that. I might just pick out these steps. Look at that, it's bleeding up and out, that's nice. Let's have a bit of that. Well, for the ink, the paint part, that'll do. I've got a lovely selection here of, of drawing pens. They came in a big pack. Um, I know the three is pretty good. Quite a nice size. For some odd reason, I always start on the chimney. So I'm just now going to put some detail and sharpen up. And the final flourish. Let's have a bit of this. I find this rigger does it very well. It splashes all over the place. It's sometimes nice just to break it up a little bit. Well, there you go, the finished product. I did do a little bit more to it. I splashed a few more bits down here. That's a very much a, a Ken Hurd effect, by the way. Thanks, Ken. Um, because the, the foreground tends to just disappear into your vision. You don't see it a great deal. You focus in on it there. So, <clears throat> just to recap, I rearranged the, 
the framing of it, the, the, the composition. So the, the, the house was sort of up here and the, the doorway is what you would look at, I think. You'd be drawn into that. So I put that in the sort of top left-hand third. And I put it upright so it looks like you're looking up at it. it gives me a bit more space around. Make sure uh, you get the perspective lines looking good. And also the light, where's the light coming from? And I've tried to use a little bit of shadow to um, exaggerate that light coming from a particular direction. After that, it's a bit in the lap of the gods as to how it works. Anyway, not, not too bad, quite pleased. This is it, uh, thank you, Ken. On to the next project, keep me busy. See you again soon, bye bye.